Uh, what's up, dude? What's up, dude? So, uh... This We've is been. going to be a how-to <laughs> video on Terex snorkels. We've been getting, or I say a lot, but there's been a few people that have, that have DM'd us uh, and asking for parts list and a how-to. I know there was definitely one request on a how, we need to put out a how-to video. So, see, we do listen to your comments. We do. We read them and we try to get to them and do the stuff that you ask for. So. Yep. Yeah, we figured we'd just yeah. do a quick little uh, uh, run-through video of, of Aaron snorkels on his Terex, and that way you guys who are interested can try to do it yourself. So, money. I'm gonna not have to put a stupid blower fan or none of the garbage that a lot of people say they have issues forums, with. with forums, guys. You know. This is tried and true, by the way. I've followed this guy a bunch, and he doesn't have any of this crap, I promise you, and he's done, which if you go back and you guys been watching, we have done a few snorkels. I've been, done a few snorkels with this guy, so. This was my initial one. This was kind of the trial run. See if I could, you know, proof of concept. Make sure that it works. Make sure that it's, uh, we're not gonna have any belt issues out here in the Texas summer heat, you know, riding slow. Um, so, it worked. And we've modified since then. I've done a few more of them for uh, for Jew. I've done one for Matt on his 2020, which you saw the video for. Um, I actually went back after the fact because Matt was saying there was a lot of cab noise from the original design. So I've, I've gone back. I've got a separate design. Uh, there could be an option if you want to go that, or you can go your own route. Um, which that. Alan plugged that uh, Matt video over here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so they, they can see that what he's talking about because after we show you guys his current setup which he said he's going to change up um like i said he did matt's the one that we just talked about beep, 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 boing, 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 right there so they can see the difference but uh anyway i'm gonna let aaron just take off and give us a run through and time for technical time Ooh. not sponsored by miller yet yet okay all right, so first thing you're gonna do is open the door. <laughs> <laughs> what you're gonna do now is you're gonna take the door and you're gonna open it. So basically we've already, um, just to save the time, and most people, you should know how to tear your side-by-side -side apart. There's uh, a thousand push pins and a few bolts for the seats so you take out. Basically you strip it all down. Um, I guess we'll start here looking down at the uh, belt intake. Now, on the parts list, I have it all broke down, so I'm not gonna go too much into we that. We can put a parts list is, in the description too. Yeah, we can, yeah, we'll put the parts list in the description. Um, so that way it gives you an idea of what you got. Um, so basically, this is your belt intake. And what I do is I PVC glue, this is the factory rubber boot and this is uh, fitting that goes in there. And I PVC glue all the connections from uh, the PVC to the rubber boots, just because I've had them come loose on me and uh, the glue seems to take care of that. Uh, we Which have- Which glue do you use? I know you said PVC glue, but do you oh, yeah, I, or do you prefer the clear? The uh, Christie's. Christie's. Uh, Christie's not, Red Hot red Blue hot. Glue. Okay. No primer. The glue by itself is good enough. This isn't a, a pressure system underwater, uh, you know, like water. Well, no water pressure. <laughs> All it's got to do is seal. Okay, okay which with almost anything will work. Uh, but I do prefer the Christie's glue. So, uh, factory factory uh, rubber clamp. I replaced the hose clamps because the factory ones are little cheesy ones. Uh, these are a little bit beefier. Um, this is all heat taped because the exhaust does run through here so I've heat taped this section coming up here um, but basically your, your circle belt intake comes up comes through here it 90s up and then we run up the dash it's kind of tight fitting here and then when it gets real bad is when you got to make this and I know it's hard to really um, the back put the camera in there and show there you, you what we got going on in there but basically uh, this one coming up to the left is your belt intake. So when it comes up, you'll see the parts list and you'll have to kind of arrange how all the fittings fit and how you want it. Um, but basically it comes up and then from there, there's a couple more fittings, which you can't really, you can kind of see in there. A couple more fittings where it goes up 
to the top snorkel, which I have a clamp. A hole saw bit. Yeah, you're gonna need a hole saw to cut a hole in your dash. Um, it's a little tricky. I usually have someone help me uh, look at it from the back and line them up where I want. Because we did, sorry to interrupt you again, we did take the dash apart, correct? Yeah, yeah, the dash has come apart. That's another thing I wasn't gonna do in the this video because I just don't feel like it's a lot of work and I don't feel like I want to mess yeah. with all that but the fenders come off um, and then the whole dash piece itself comes off where you can actually access underneath here um, it's a tight fit but it can be done um, some people actually run all three through there I don't know how they do that this is just what worked for me um, and again these are spaced a little different because this was the original design um, and then I've changed these designs as well which you can just do your own thing on that um, okay, so that would be your belt intake. Now your, your motor intake, um, which is gonna be incredibly difficult because it is very tight. Let's see if I can get a better angle over here where you can see it. Nope, you can't really see it. Just barely you can see the clamp. So I used the factory rubber uh, spot off of the motor intake. Use that and go to PVC. We'll begin with the glue. Um, it's a very short piece uh, that comes out of there. Uh, it's just basically a couple 90s. And again, I have the list in the description where you can see that. Um, so that would be your motor intake. It's tight, it fits. Now we move back here to the belt exhaust. Um, oh, this is all two inch pipe, by the way, two inch pipe. Um, the belt exhaust is three inch which the factory is three inch. And again, you see the PVC glue connecting to the factory rubber connector here. Um, this is a street 90. And then it just kind of goes up and makes its way up the back, which again, this is the original design. The new design actually takes this, comes up a little, comes over your rear cup holders, back, up the back and over. It hooks over the very rear. And uh, it really quietens down the, uh, the cab noise, the whistle and whine you get from the belt. Um, so that's an option. If you want to keep it simple, you know, by all means, go with this design. Make your own design. I don't care. So uh, there's that. Uh, and another thing you'll notice in the parts list, you'll see mention of uh, water 90s and a drain 90 or drain fittings and water fittings. So basically the difference is the water fittings are they're a slightly different size and angle so for really tight spots they work out really well and also for the risers they um, they just look better having the water fittings but basically the drain fittings are like this here where you can see it's kind of it's a little hard to see here but you got a little bit of a dip and some texture to it you know that's a drain fitting and these are usually cheaper at home depot uh, and then when it comes to a water fitting you can see these are water fittings see how it's just real smooth on the outside there's no divots nothing this 90 is a little tighter than the drain ones uh, but this would be a water fitting these are a little more expensive but they do look nicer on uh, risers and things you're gonna see uh, so that's that's the difference in that uh, let's see what else Get over the vent lines and everything. Yeah, I mean, dude. Talk about the vent lines, and then you sealed it because of the particular years we found out. 2020, we didn't have to worry about on mats. Right. But on this year, we had to seal up your uh, brain, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. So this is a 16, and uh, as well as the other 2016 I did for Jew was um, the you, you have right the under here, which we can't. We didn't have all this off, so we can't really. Show yeah, it. we didn't take it all completely apart, but basically it bolts right in. underneath your dash here when you get this off you'll see what we're talking about but uh and if you look the other video of matt's 2020 Tarek snorkel you will see uh, it you'll there. see it we we went over that because his was actually factory sealed uh, but the water the the power steering brain isn't waterproof and it's up located underneath your dash in this area here it's in a black bag um it's kind of a pain to get to you have to pull all this apart but you'll see it it's in a black bag under there basically you want to take that and uh, you want to silicone it. And I think I have, I think Alan could put in a little, little clip of what it looks like when it's siliconed up. Um, but basically you want to seal that. And all right, so you want to seal the, the power steering brain. 
it's not waterproof. The first time you dunk it, you might get lucky. Second time, not so much. And uh, it'll fry it. It'll fry it and it's very expensive to replace. So that's what you want to do. Um, again, dielectric grease all the connections you got in there just for your peace of mind if you're going to be going deep. Um, another thing is there's there's all sorts of vent lines. There's a, there's a fan vent line. There's your front differential, rear differential, uh, your fuel vent. Uh, is another big one that needs to be relocated up. Uh, I'll show you kind of what we got here. Again, it'll be kind of hard to see because we don't have it stripped down, but what we have, you see these hoses here, I've got coiled up. Now, one of these is the, uh, the coolant overflow line. That one has just got coiled up here, so I haven't had any issues with contamination there. Um, as well as the fan vent line that runs down underneath there it runs up and it's cooled up as well because it's not absolutely critical but i've never had any issues with water getting in it, anything like that um your front differential by factory and on this 2016 and up um, it runs up to the air box and it's normally just tucked in and stabbed into the frame back here well what i've done is i've taken the line and the end of it and i ordered can am bellows off of amazon and these right here basically they allow it to the pressure from your differential it expands and contracts this little accordion here book, 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 book. having fun with that all right so that's that's your front differential and the vent lines there and i just kind of have that tucked off in there okay and then going back here to your rear differential joke for me jamie okay <laughs> <laughs> so your rear differential line uh by factory design it comes out and it stabs into the frame up here what I've done is basically the same thing with the front. And I've just taken it and installed the bellows on the end of it. And no issues with that there. Keeps it sealed, keeps it nice and, and tight. Um, a big one. The big one. Is your fuel vent. It's a factory. This is a bad issue. Even if you're not snorkeling, it's a good idea to relocate this because it is located low. Um, the from factory you got a little check valve here and then it stabs into the side of the, the frame under here you get a little bit of water a little too deep dirt dust this check valve will get clogged up and it'll get stuck open and you'll actually get a bunch of dirt and garbage down in your fuel which you don't want that's no good so what we do is we take the end piece off run a little piece of hose with a, a cheap lawn and garden filter that hose runs up uh, there's a couple different ways you could do it Mine's up really high just because I'm snorkeled. But basically it runs up the cage. I don't know if you can see that, it's pretty bright out here. Up the cage. And cow. There. This little breather from AutoZone. Uh, just not really necessary, but I just I'm a little overkill on it because fuel is kind of important to a motor running. So uh, some people will run it up the back of the seat somewhere in there you know you could do that if you're not gonna go full on send uh, but I believe that's it if there's uh, anything I'm you felt like I might have missed anything you have questions about just shoot us a message we'll uh, leave a comment yeah. whatever you know whatever and we'll uh, we'll see if we can get you answered get you figured out help you out be uh, the whole purpose of this ain't it just to help people out that's what we're doing let me talk to the folks. You can't talk to people. I'm going to talk to him. Let me tell him. This is also how he did it and how we see fit. So all the hater hater boys out there like, oh, my dad did it this way or my brother says do it this way. That's fine. You guys do it how you want. We just had questions asking how we did ours. So I had to get that disclaimer out of the way. Get the disclaimer yeah. in there. You just, if I mean? you got that negative Nancy stuff, just get on out of here. Just go on. Just, just get. Just go on. Get. <laughs> <laughs> I hope this guy, I hope uh, this helps you guys. I really do. I think Aaron did a bang up job. But like he said, if there's any questions or anything, just put in the comments. So, uh, yeah, that should wrap it up. Yeah, huh? So long, Kuralu. Bye bye.